The states of California and Florida are both located in the Sun Belt, an area of the United States which has attractive weather and is drawing millions of people to it. Both states have grown considerably in the last half century, but what are the similarities and the differences amongst the two? Let's explore. The United States is the third largest nation in terms of population. The top three states for population are California at nearly 39 million, Texas at little more than 30 million, and Florida at over 22 million. These three states alone represent more than one quarter of the U.S. population. Also, all of them are situated in the Sun Belt, an area of appealing weather, particularly during the winter, which has drawn a lot of people from the colder northern states. In today's episode, we are going to compare California and Florida's geography. The video will focus on both physical geography and human geography. In terms of physical geography, we will review three main factors, the geomorphology, meteorology, and ecology, while with human geography, we will review four main factors, the demography, urbanization, the economy, and geopolitics. Before we begin, make sure you subscribe to my channel, Our World, Our Planet, Our Home, if you enjoy learning about geography and earth science. Let's get started. The geomorphology of California and Florida is considerably different, and out of the criteria we are discussing, this one has the largest contrast. In size, California is the third largest state, and it's in the rugged west. Therefore, the state has a very varied physical geography. Even the coastal areas are hilly and mountainous in certain areas, but the interior of the state is where many of the higher mountains are. In fact, California is home to Mount Whitney, which is the highest peak in the continent of the United States, at 14,505 feet. It's made up of igneous granitic rock, which is pronounced in much of the Sierra Nevadas. Only 80 miles away is Death Valley, which is the lowest elevation in the U.S., at 282 feet below sea level. Seismically, California is at the intersection of the North American Plate and the Pacific Plate, and the San Andreas Fault, a transform boundary, is a separator. Earthquakes on this fault are very common and have caused many of the highest magnitude earthquakes within the state. Heading over to Florida, the geomorphology is very bland compared to California. Florida is mostly over limestone bedrock, which is known as karst topography. This type of topography is very prone to chemical weathering, and because of that, sinkholes, caves, and underground aquifers are common statewide. Florida is home to the lowest, highest elevation in the United States, Britain Hill, at just 345 feet, but much of the state is less than 100 feet above sea level. Since the state isn't located on any plate boundaries, earthquakes rarely affect Florida, but a strong earthquake originating in the Caribbean in early 2020 was felt in the Miami metropolitan area. Meteorologically, both California and Florida are known for their warm weather year-round, but there are some big differences. Since California is large, climate zones differ. Coastal California has a Mediterranean climate which features mild wet winters and warm to hot dry summers. In lower elevated inland areas, the climate switches to a desert arid climate which has hot dry summers and mild winters with variable precipitation. However, the higher elevations of California can get quite cold in the winter months. Some of the higher elevations of the Sierra Nevada mountains get feet upon feet of snow throughout the winter which hydrologically helps tremendously with water supplies for coastal urban areas. On the other hand, since Florida has a low elevation and is fairly low in latitude, the state experiences mild to hot conditions year-round. The average high in January for northern Pensacola is 62 degrees, while in July it's almost 92 degrees. In southern Miami, the average January high is 76 degrees, while July's average is 91 degrees. Winters are pleasant statewide, but occasionally cold waves from the north come down and give the state, especially North Florida, below freezing temperatures, particularly at night. Contrary to the winter, summers statewide are hot and humid, which in comparison to California summers, is uncomfortable. The humidity also triggers daily thunderstorms, which produce a lot of lightning. In fact, Tampa is informally regarded as being the lightning capital of the world. During the late summer and autumn, Florida is also prone to hurricanes. Some of them become Category 3 plus, creating lots of damage and disruptions.
Both California and Florida have unique ecosystems, but differ a lot from each other. California's size and ruggedness allows the state to have multiple different types of biomes, including coastal Mediterranean, inland desert, high mountains, and lush coniferous forests, which have trees such as coastal redwoods and giant sequoias. Within the wooded areas of California, many unique animals live there, including some predator species like mountain lions, coyotes, bobcat, black bear, and gray wolves, which were just reintroduced in Northern California. Coastally, many sea mammals are present, such as seals and sea lions. Heading to Florida, biodiversity is also high. In terms of plants, several species of palm trees, citrus trees, and cypress trees are commonly seen. Mangroves, a plant that could grow in salt water, is a crucial part of the Everglades ecosystem in South Florida. Within the Everglades ecosystem, many animal species make their homes, including the well-known apex predator, the American alligator. Alongside them, the American crocodile makes its home within Florida, although it's considered vulnerably threatened. Florida panthers, another very vulnerable feline species, live within the Everglades. On the coastline, many sea creatures are present, including sharks, stingrays, many fish species, and dolphins. One other sea mammal common to Florida is the manatee, a plant-eating sea mammal who has a very calm demeanor. Now that we have talked about the physical side, let's start talking about the human side. The first of the four we will discuss is demography, which is the composition of the human population within a given area. Both California and Florida have become very diverse in the last half century. California has lots of diverse racial and ethnic groups represented, especially in the urban areas. Statewide, California is now considered a majority-minority state, with the largest racial group being Hispanics at 39.4%, topping out whites at 38.4%. With Hispanics, Mexicans are overwhelmingly the largest ethnic group within the state, but other Hispanic ethnic groups such as Central Americans and South Americans have immigrated there recently, legally and illegally. Another minority racial group of high percentage is Asians, which makes up 17% of the Californian population. And ethically, many Asians come from China, the Korean Peninsula, Japan, and Southeast Asia. Florida has a diverse demographic profile too, but it differs quite a bit from California's. 51.5% of Florida's population is white, with English Americans representing the largest ethnic group. Hispanics are the second highest racial group at 26.5%, with many of them living in South Florida within the Miami metropolitan area. Ethnically, Cuban Americans make up the largest ethnic group associated with Hispanics. Other Hispanic groups represented include Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, Mexicans, and South Americans. Florida also has a large black population with 15.1%. Besides African Americans, other ethnic black groups represented include Haitians, Jamaicans, and Bahamians. Overall, within the next few decades, both California and Florida will become more majority-minority with the changing demographical profile that is currently occurring in the United States. Urbanization patterns between California and Florida are quite similar, as both states developed rapidly in the 20th century and were orientated towards the automobile. Therefore, the car is the main form of transportation, and both states have extensive highway systems. With cities, though, both states have differences, which we will discuss. California has one of the best highway systems in the country, with multiple interstates, such as I-5, I-10, I-15, and I-80, along with U.S. highways and state highways. Although they're well-designed, traffic is a major issue, especially during rush hour. This leads to more pollution, especially smog which develops over cities such as Los Angeles. In terms of cities, California has three cities with more than 1 million people. Los Angeles with 3.9 million, San Diego with 1.4 million, and San Jose with just over a million. The two largest metro areas within the state are Los Angeles's with 13 million, and San Francisco's with 4.7 million. Of the 20 largest communities in California, all have more than 200,000 residents. Much of the Californian population is located on the coastline, but there are some notable inland urban areas, such as Fresno, Bakersfield, and Stockton. Heading to Florida, the state has a very vast highway system, with interstates such as I-95, I-10, and I-75 traversing the state, and multiple major U.S. and state highways as well. Despite Florida having more than 22 million residents, 
No city has more than 1 million people, with Jacksonville having the highest population with nearly 950,000 residents. Alone, Miami only has 442,000 residents, but the Miami metropolitan area is by far the state's largest, with 6.1 million, ninth in the U.S. Other notable cities include Tampa and St. Petersburg, both within the same metropolitan area, Orlando, and Tallahassee, the state capital. Like California, most of the population lives on the coast, but since Florida is around 130 miles wide, inland cities such as Orlando develop rapidly. Both California and Florida have huge economies, with California having a $3.6 trillion GDP and Florida having a $1.4 trillion GDP. If both states were individual nations, California would be the fifth largest, comparable to India, and Florida would be the 16th largest, comparable to Indonesia. California is home to many well-known companies and is quite diversified. Silicon Valley, an area in the San Francisco Bay Area, is headquarters to Apple, Google, and Facebook. Hollywood, located in Los Angeles, is a major center for the entertainment industry, including film, television, music, and gaming. And California also has a prosperous agricultural industry, producing a wide variety of crops and livestock. It is particularly known for its production of fruits, vegetables, nuts, and wine. With jobs associated with tech and entertainment, the per capita income is $92,000 a year, one of the highest in the nation. Florida is headquarters of many well-known companies as well. In the Miami metropolitan area, tourism and hospitality companies are headquartered there, including Carnival Cruise Lines, Royal Caribbean, Marriott International, and Darden Brands, who owns restaurants such as the Olive Garden and Longhorn Steakhouse. Within the Orlando area, Walt Disney World, an entertainment and resort complex, is the most visited vacation resort in the world. Agriculturally, the state is known for its production of citrus fruits, such as oranges and grapefruits, and strawberries, tomatoes, and other crops. Since Florida has more rural communities and a high senior population, per capita incomes are lower than California, averaging around $60,000 a year. The last human determinant we will discuss is geopolitics. Because of the population of both states, California and Florida have complicated political geographies. Historically, California was a reliably Republican state, particularly from the late 19th century through much of the 20th century. During this period, it consistently voted for Republican presidential candidates and had Republican governors and senators. Ronald Reagan, an actor and U.S. president from 1981 to 1989, was the Republican governor of California from 1967 to 1975. The most recent Republican governor was actor Arnold Schwarzenegger, who was governor from 2003 to 2011, but by this time, California transitioned to a more Democrat-associated state. Federally, the last time California voted Republican for a presidential candidate was during the 1988 election, which elected George H.W. Bush. Today, California is a safe Democrat state for federal elections and even state elections, with Democrat Governor Gavin Newsom winning the 2018 and 2022 gubernatorial elections. Heading to Florida, the state has been a swing state for a long time. Federally and statewide, Florida has voted for Democrats and Republicans. In 2000, Florida was a deciding state for the 2000 U.S. presidential election. Republican George W. Bush received the 271 electoral votes to win after many recounts in Florida determined that Bush got 2,912,790 votes and Democrat Al Gore got 2,912,253 votes. Since then, Florida has become a more reliable Republican state and hasn't had a Democrat governor since 1999. In the last two presidential elections, Florida voted for Donald Trump, and interestingly, Trump won by a wider margin in 2020, while he lost other previously won swing states such as Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. In addition, Governor Ron DeSantis won the gubernatorial election by a razor-thin margin in 2018, but won the 2022 election by nearly 20%. The likely reason is that more Cuban Americans than ever are supporting the Republican Party, as the margins within Democrat-leaning Miami shrank in 2020 and 2022. Another reason may be the aging demographics of the state, as older individuals who were registered Republicans are moving there. 
Some political analysts even think that Florida is now a red state instead of a swing state. Although there are commonalities between California and Florida, there are many contrasting physical and human attributes. For the first time in decades, California's population shrank a little, while Florida's population continued to grow. There are several theories behind this, with one being the high cost of living in California, a shift to more remote work post-pandemic, and a rise in crime, homelessness, and drug use within cities such as San Francisco and Los Angeles. With Florida, the population increase may be linked to the aging baby boomer population in their migration post-retirement to the Sunbelt State. Nevertheless, we will see future changes with both states in the coming decades. If you had to choose between California and Florida, which one would you choose to live in? Leave a comment in the comment section below. Thanks again for watching this week's episode. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel, Our World, Our Planet, Our Home. Until next time!